Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you like retro gaming, you definitely came to the right place. We are definitely talking super retro today. Happy 50th anniversary of Pong, the amazing arcade game that came out in 1972. It was created by Al Alcorn from a directive by Nolan Bushnell. And Nolan Bushnell was influenced by sort of a Pong type game, a table tennis game, Pong type game, before Pong. Uh, Magnavox Odyssey, which came out in 1972. Nolan Bushnell saw a demonstration of the Magnavox Odyssey home console, and he got the idea of Pong from that. It's obvious you can see that, and there's records of, of uh, Nolan Bushnell being at that demonstration. But anyway, it's a great game, and it added some things uh, to what you saw on the Magnavox Odyssey. It's definitely a better game than any of the Pong variants on the Magnavox Odyssey. And I remember Pong, not back in 72, I would have been five years old then. Don't remember it from then. My first memory of Pong is from 1975. And if you've heard this story before, I apologize. Um, occasionally my family would go to the skating rink or the bowling alley or something like that. It wasn't, it was very rare, but occasionally we did. And I distinctly remember two video games in the arcades in 1975, Pong, and Midway's Gunfight. Now, Gunfight was, you know, a simple game, two stick figures coming out to shoot each other, but it seemed pretty darn advanced at the time, and the cabinet looked really slick. Pong was great, but the cabinet, it looked a little old-fashioned compared to Midway's Gunfight, but I still love the game, and I don't distinctly remember. I'm sure I must have played against my brother, because wherever we went, you know, as kids, um, I was eight years old, my brother would have been 12 or 13, and I'm sure we played Pong together at the arcade. I just remember seeing it and playing it, and I'm sure I didn't just play a rando. I'm sure I played my brother, but I have a much more distinct memory of playing Pong later in 1975 for Christmas. Again, a story I've covered before, but if you're new to the channel, you haven't heard this before, and uh, or you might have heard it at one of my panels. I've talked about this before anyway, Pong 1975 at my cousin's house. So picture this, it's 1975. When you wanna play a video game, you pretty much have to go somewhere. I had never heard of the Magnavox Odyssey, Ralph Bear's creation. For whatever reason, in 1975, I didn't know this thing existed. I don't remember seeing the TV commercial for it. None of my friends had it. And you know, it wasn't like a, super blockbuster seller. I mean, it did okay on the marketplace and it was definitely revolutionary and influential, but it wasn't ubiquitous like the Atari 2600 would be later. And I had just never heard of or seen the Magnavox Odyssey. So when my cousin got Atari Pong for the home, the plug and play console on Christmas in 1975, I could not believe what I was seeing. We go to my cousin's house in McGregor, Texas, which is outside of, a Waco, outside of Waco, just a tiny little town of about 2,000, 2,500, something like that, outside of Waco, Texas. And I've mentioned McGregor before because this is the first time I remember playing Space Invaders in 1978. McGregor had three arcades. This was back in the day when every town in America seemingly had at least one arcade, even the little, little bitty towns, you know, maybe Every town with a thousand or more people seemed to have an arcade. And tiny little McGregor, Texas had three. And there were all these pop-up, mom and pop, pop-pop <laughs> arcades that you hear so much about from the early 80s. Just, and I remember going into the biggest arcade of the three in McGregor and playing Space Invaders in 1978. And that just blew my mind. They had three Space Invaders machines. And that game was a little scary you know, and a little daunting and freaking awesome. But we're not here to talk about the greatness of Space Invaders today. We're discussing Pong. And 1975, we go to my cousin's house right after Christmas and picture his house. It's a small frame house in McGregor, Texas. And my aunt was divorced at the time, my cousin's mom. And so it was just her supporting two kids on a single income. I guess she got some child support as well, I would imagine but they obviously weren't wealthy. They lived in this little frame house, but he tended to have some pretty cool stuff despite their 
you know, regardless. And he said, he told me and my brother, when we went over, we had gone over, you know, just after Christmas, you know, typical family get together. And he said, hey, guys, come back to my room and check out what I got for Christmas. And so we go back there and we're thinking, oh, who knows, might be see something cool. We knew he typically got some pretty neat things. And he had Pong hooked up to the little black and white TV in his bedroom. Now, it was unusual enough for people to have, you know, for kids especially, to have a TV in their bedroom. Back in the 70s, most people just had one television in their house. And the, at the time, a lot of people only had one black and white television. But most people just had one TV in their house and it was typically in the living room or family room or whatever. Some people would have a small TV in their, in their uh, kitchen and maybe the parents would have a small TV in their bedroom. Usually just one TV in the house. But my cousin, way back in 1975, and he was my brother's age, so he would have been uh, about 12, 13 at the time, he had a TV in his room and he had Pong hooked up to it and I could not believe what I was seeing. Up until this point, I had no idea you could play a video game inside a house. This was before the Mattel, you know, a little electronic handheld games. Those aren't technically video games, but we sort of lump them in. And obviously it was before Atari 2600, before Fairchild Channel F. It was a year before Fairchild Channel F. And I could not believe what I was seeing. Cause I had, like I said, I hadn't heard of the Magnavox Odyssey. Didn't know about it. But here my cousin was playing Pong in his bedroom, showing us Pong and my brother and I were just floored. And so we stayed there through the course of the weekend. So we were there about three days. And so we had a lot of time. And my brother and I, we just could not pull us away from Pong. And it was a few days after Christmas. So my cousin had played it enough to get accustomed to it and didn't feel like he had to play the whole time. So him and his sister, my other cousin from that family, you know, obviously they all live together. My aunt, my two cousins, uh, and they had played each other enough to get, you know, used to it where they weren't having to be on it all the time. But me and my brother, you could not pull us away from this thing. And we were just playing it uh, just for hours and hours that weekend. And by the time we left on that Sunday afternoon, me and my brother could thoroughly trounce my cousin and his sister, my two cousins. We could thoroughly trounce them at Pong because we just fell in love with it and we were just we just couldn't, we, it was just one of those mind-blowing moments. Think about your past. Think about the first time you saw, you know, Star Wars or something like that. Seeing Pong in a house and playing it on a TV set was just crazy. Being able to control images on a television set was just unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. And yeah, credit that to Pong. Amazing game. And these days, I still love playing some Pong. I've got several of the plug and play consoles, you know, just the basic old Pong machine, you know, games. But if I want to play Pong, what I typically do is play Video Olympics on my Atari 2600 because it works beautifully with the paddle controllers. And Video Olympics has several Pong variations on it, quite a few actually. There are some kind of lame games on here. I think there's a basketball game or something like that that's not very good that I recall. I don't ever play those typically. Oh, check it out. Somewhere, I got this for $1.49, a thrift store or something. Anyway, Video Olympics. And I've got the Sears version as well. As well. Telegames, this is the same as Video Olympics, but it's Pong Sports. They actually put Pong in the title. And I think that's pretty cool. Awesome stuff there. And I don't care how much this is worth. It's not worth a ton. I just think it's great. I love this in my collection. I don't care a whole lot about what my collection is worth or anything like that because I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. Sure, someday it'll be cool uh, that I have some, you know, pretty hard to find games. But right now, I'm, you know, for the foreseeable future, I just have fun with this stuff. And one game I recommend for you guys is Pong the Next Level for the PlayStation. Now the PlayStation doesn't have paddle controllers. This is a great game, richly detailed 3D environments, graphics and enhanced character animations. Fun for up to four players, pretty cool. Like Quadra Pong back in the day, you can play four player Pong, a lot of different variants on Pong with a lot of additions and you know, nice graphics and all kind of crazy 
features and Pong the next level. You can get Pong the next level for your PS1 for super cheap. They say retro gaming is really expensive these, these days. And I know what they're talking about. There are some games that have gotten crazy expensive. And a lot of the complete in box NES titles that you guys really want to get in your collection are just too expensive uh, for the average budget. But if you look around, you get card only, or if you get some of these re retro reimagined games like this, you can retro game for pretty cheap. I highly recommend Pong the Next Level. It is a ton of fun for one, two, or four players. Great stuff. So anyway, that's my quick little recollection of discovering Pong, playing it in the arcades, playing it at my cousin's house, and now playing it here sometimes every once in a while, maybe on my birthday or maybe uh, on a holiday or something, I can convince my family to play some Pong on the Atari or maybe one of my, uh, you know, my old Pong clones back in the day. Yeah, still love me some Pong, still love to play it today, and I really like it when my family will play it with me. So let me know in the comments when you discovered Pong, uh, what some of, if you have any special memories associated with Pong. Um, if you still enjoy it today, I know a lot of people say Pong is too simplistic today. It just doesn't hold up, but I think it holds up beautifully. It's still just real pure one-on-one -on -one action. Um, I think it's, uh, if, especially if you play it on the Atari 2600 or one of the you know dedicated Pong machines where you actually have paddle controls, works beautifully. I love it. I think it's one of the greatest two-player games of all time, so I highly recommend it. And Pong influenced, you know, it had a huge influence on the industry including being a direct influence on Breakout, the game that in 1976 convinced me that maybe I like video games even more than my beloved pinball. Yeah, Midway's Gunfight was awesome. Pong was awesome. The next evolutionary leap in the ball and paddle type of game, Breakout in 1976, holy cow. That really, really amped up my interest in video games and you know, and everything that would follow, you know, like Space Invaders and Asteroids and Missile Command and on and on and on. I could talk about these forever. Maybe I will talk about some more individual arcade games and some videos. Let me know in the comments, in addition to your Pong interest, what arcade video game of the 70s or 80s would you like me to discuss on this channel? My experiences with uh, a game that was really special to me. I should do a breakout episode. I should do a Space Invader episode for sure, but if you can think of some other games, I'll do a Pac-Man one. If you can think of maybe some more obscure stuff or maybe one of your favorite games, let me know in the comments what arcade games you'd like me to cover here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. We're at over 4,100 subscribers now. I'm zooming my way to 5,000. If you could please share this video, if you could let your friends and family members know about the channel, have them subscribe, that would be incredibly helpful. It's really tough these days with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube typically recommends videos that already have a ton of views or channels that already have a ton of subscribers. So it's harder for small channels uh, to really get traction, but hey, we're doing pretty well here so far, having a ton of fun. And as long as I have fun on YouTube, I'm gonna keep doing it. And very briefly, so I was at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo uh, just over very recently, and they had a 50th anniversary celebration of Pong, and everybody was very excited about it. They even had a big cake. Here we are 50 years later. People still love them some Pong. All right, guys, thanks again. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. We will talk to you in another video. Mario!